Hey guys, Kurt from Time Machine Transport back at it again with uh, air in the air in the uh, <laughs> the reservoir. So I'll explain what I'm going to do. But anyways, like I said in my other video, I thought it was a hose even after spending 10 hours in Wichita waiting on those guys yesterday. They did some stuff, but still wasn't the, wasn't the, uh, the resolution or the uh, gear for it. But I thought it was a hose, but this hose, I'll explain it after, after I pause it. You can see the air in there right now. Now watch. I'm going to pause you guys, and I'm going to go inside the freight liner here in Des Moines and get a new fuel line. We're going to make it up, and I'll show you how it's going to how it's going to uh, solve the air in there. All right, guys, I'm back. So. Now, what I did was pulled the fuel line. This this really suck is in, in that, where that the guy over in Texoma, Robert, when he replumbed this, he brought it out, which it was always a bear to get in there anyways, but thank God I got, was able to get it off. So, um, so this was the fourth, this is the fourth time around. So, uh, I can't really count the Moriarty thing because the truck needed a PM. And I needed a fuel filter and an air filter, but just to show you guys how expensive trucking is. So my PM, and I got the ultimate where obviously they change the filters and do a higher grade oil, but then they check the the tractor PSI, uh, the tire pressure on your tractor and your trailer. Um, so I had the PM done, a new fuel filter, new oil filters obviously, a new air filter on the other side the big one and then a new air dryer filter and that total was uh 491 okay almost 500 bucks then to do the replumbing on that just those fittings and i had brass on here but these are non-breakable non-crackable i guess i mean i'm sure you can break it if you tried but the brass fittings are um notorious for cracking and breaking you would think brass right so he put this on replumbed this resealed it um and when i did the video on and that was so just for that for two hours worth of labor because he had he was kind of in the middle of something and then he had to run for parts and then come back so for two hours it was 130 dollars. i gave him 140 so that's not too bad because your average mechanic, your diesel mechanics runs runs 95 to 125 an hour. So that's not too bad with the parts. So 140 I was happy to pay. And it needed to be plumbed anyways because I didn't like the way it was on the backside. And I thought it was this hose at first, but it ended up not being, not being that hose, which goes all the way back to your tank, I guess. Now, um... So, to, and, and the fitting was cracked. So that was a must do. The PM was a must do, but I'm gonna, just for this air, um, sucking air, I'm gonna, I'm gonna count the dollars. So the 491 and some change, I'm not gonna count that at the TA, cause that's, that's regular maintenance on a semi. This right here was not regular maintenance. So that was 140 bucks. And then the guys yesterday in Wichita, I didn't, there was a shutoff valve right here in line here that went to the tank so you could shut off your fuel coming out of your tanks, which I didn't, and I bought this used on eBay with that shutoff valve on it. And I didn't necessarily like it because it's it could be problematic. Anything that's not connected straight can be a problem. You know, shutoff valves can go bad. Um, if it's a gate valve or a ball valve. Anyways, a ball valve typically won't go bad, but a gate valve will. And if you don't know what that is, just check out the difference between a ball valve and a gate valve. So I didn't I never I didn't really like that. It was kind of redundant, especially on the bottom here where I have a drain a drain valve right here to, to empty out the fuel. So, anyways, um so I, I didn't like that. Then they pulled this off, and I'm sorry, David, I, I asked you if you changed the the um the o-rings uh, this o-ring here and this o-ring here i assumed you did because obviously they come with the fuel filter but the guy over in wichita was like oh uh it's probably a bad um 
a bad O-ring, maybe a crease in it or something. Did the guy change the O-rings? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I don't see why he wouldn't. So, uh, and it's and I'll tell you after I'm done explaining. So, anyways, we put a new O-ring here and a new O-ring here, and we had no air after they t they took out the shutoff valve here, and then they put a new fitting on here and a new fitting on here. And I waited like 10 hours for those guys, 10 hours, because they were on a roadside service call and then they had to run for parts and they were in between trucks and it, it was 10 hours of waste. And I'm going to tell you why. So anyways, when I got to Wichita, this, this is for anybody who, has a, who wants to do this kind of stuff yourself. If you want to do a process of elimination... Oh, and, and it also included this fitting. I I have these fittings at the shop. It's a coupler. And I've done this before to troubleshoot our Kenworth, because our Kenworth had the same problem. And I believe this one had the same problem. So I'm going to tell you guys an easy way to do a process of elimination to see if it's your fuel pump or your injectors. Or if it's anything coming from your fuel reservoir, your water fuel separator, okay? You take your line here that comes from your tank, and you take your line there that would come from your fuel pump, obviously the one I just removed from here. So your fuel will come in, go into the fuel water separator filter, and then exit out, go up, and then into your fuel pump, which goes into your injectors, okay? To do a process of elimination and to save yourself a bunch of money, have one of these. I didn't have one of these, but I told the guys once, they, once they're once done using it, I want it because I paid for it. You take this line off and you take this. So you take this line off that comes into your fuel water separator filter and this line and you couple the two together. So you take that line and put it on one end and you take that line and you put it on the left side. Tighten it up, you start your truck up. Now it's not healthy for the truck because you have no filter for your dirty fuel that goes into your injectors. But I've done it and I haven't had any problems. So um, now if the truck starts up, you're gonna have air in the system. So you will get white smoke. Once it's the, the truck starts up, let it idle for like five minutes and then take your accelerator and hammer it all the way to the floor so push your accelerator all the way to the floor and if you're getting a shit ton of air and white smoke constantly let off let it idle for another five minutes or so so about 10 minutes or so and then do the same thing press your accelerator all the way to the floor and let up and then press it all the way to the floor so that your, your motor is like totally maxed out and if you if you have white smoke and air in the system it's either your fuel pump or your injectors. And I'll tell you a story that I had over in Texas that I know this, okay? If it goes and it runs perfectly, then that means it's something in your reservoir. Or, so you can eliminate this line, you can eliminate that line, okay? And you can eliminate your, um, your fuel pump and your injectors. So that means your problem exists here. Could either be a crack in your reservoir, a, cap in your, a crack in your cap, a bad O-ring, a bad O-ring, or a bad O-ring, or a loose fitting, or a loose fitting, okay? So by coupling this line and that line together, you eliminate this whole system. So that's what they call a process of elimination. That's what I, I told the guys to do yesterday because I was kind of tired of it because I was continually sucking air, and I'm like, so now... You just saved yourself a shit ton of money by either having the mechanic replace your fuel pump or somewhere in that area or your injectors, okay? Now, I know this for a fact because when I was in Texas a couple, about a year and a half, a year ago, a year and a half ago, I had, but the truck was sucking air really bad. Like I was, I was heavy and I was pulling up this hill and she just almost died. She was just like white smoke everywhere. I'm like, what the hell? So I went over to El Paso, and I, there's a mechanic that I got over there, um, and he put it, he put the truck on his computer, and computer, um, the computer diagnosed that it was injectors. So he pulled the cover, um, and he found a broken wire on one of the injectors. So he he repaired it, spliced it, and the truck ran good. 
So I went down to Southern Texas and I did another haul back up. So on my way back up, it happened again, but even worse. Like I, I literally like almost like literally it was like down to one mile an hour and I was smoke. It looked like the truck was on fire. So I went back to him and he didn't have time to work on it. He said, but there was a guy over there. They call him Weto. He's a, he's a Mexican dude, speaks perfect Spanish. He's Mexican, but he looks like Tom Selleck with a big mustache and everything. Anyways, Tom Selleck looks completely white. That's why they call him Weto. Weto in Spanish means white. So anyways, um, so Weto, he has time to work on it. So he pulls he, and he says, well, it's probably your turbo. Or I said, nah, I just put the turbo on. He's like, well, maybe a bad turbo, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, I, I personally think it's O-rings on the injectors or bad injectors. So sure enough, he pulled the cover off. Looked at the injectors, I had like two or three broken O-rings on different injectors. So this guy was amazing. Um, he ended up pulling all the injectors, putting all new O-rings on, all right? Putting it all back down, and he charged me like 400 bucks. That's a, that's, that's a steal for, for that kind of work. Anyways, the problem still existed. So we found the broken wire. On the injector, you would think that was it. Then we found broken O-rings or, or, you know, rotted, you know, bad O-rings. We thought that was the problem. Then he says, it's definitely your turbo. I said, I don't think it's a turbo. And I'm not a mechanic. I don't pretend to be one. It just didn't seem like it was, that's that's the, the route, the path that was taking. So I told him, I said, I, I think it's because I had the fleet guard. And that's when I told you in the last video, I had a cracked hose. And he's like, no, no, no. So... I went and bought one of these, but my dumbass left it at the shop, and I coupled this line and that line together, and the truck ran like a rocket. And I know that's unhealthy. You're not supposed to run it that way. Shame on me. But I ran it, and I was able to order this other one that I have now. I, I got rid of the fleet guard. Because I think I thought it was a fleet guard because the hose, it didn't seem like the hose. But for some reason, when it was coupled, it didn't vibrate and it didn't open that crack. Anyways, so I I, I, I kind of know what I'm talking about, I think. But anyway, so now I'm going to, I just want to show you. So that's a process. Oh, damn it. Of course I would drop it. That's the process of elimination for, and if you guys say I'm wrong then I'm wrong but anyways so if you have the same problem I just showed you that that this hose was the problem I don't know if it's kinked wrong or whatever the hose is still good so I'm gonna keep it because that hose is the exact same hose as this so I'm gonna keep it but so now let's go back so let's let, so now I'm over at Freightliner and they sell you these they will not make them for you on the fuel side of it because they don't want to be responsible so they have these nice little compression fittings which are really nice I've used these before but so we got 140 bucks on we got 140 bucks on the um, on the plumbing we got 175 yeah 175 dollars to remove this valve, to plumb it, blah, blah, blah. And they pressure checked it and everything, but there was no, there was no bubbles. When, when we, when I left there yesterday, this was perfectly clear and solid. No vibrant, no bubbles, no nothing. I was like, oh, right on. So I was happy to pay the 175. I'm like, here we go, right on. So 100, 100 for, the 491, you can't, you can't, you can't add because that's regular maintenance. But 140 for that, 175 for that. And then we have 131.44 for these two hoses and these four fittings. So if you do the math, we're what uh, 104? We got 175, two, three, four, uh, about four, 450 bucks ish, somewhere like that, right? So we got 175, 130 is two, uh, 306. For, yeah, about four, 450 bucks. <laughs> so for for sucking air, and it's funny because every mechanic, so the not David, um, 
over at the TA, um, over in Moriarty. Good, great guy. And thanks for subscribing. Um, but the guy over in Texoma, Robert, said, oh, I can't believe that he didn't see that. You know, why, why wouldn't he have seen that? All this. And then the guys over in Wichita said, oh, how, you know, how did the guy not, not diagnose it? It was a bad O-ring and the fitting had a little bit of kink in it. Um, oh, how, you know, how did he not see that? So every mechanic seems to slam another mecha mechanic, just like, you know, a truck driver slams a truck driver, a doctor, whatever the case may be. They, so now I can say to these guys in Wichita, how did you not know it was a hose after, although the hose was new, were like maybe eight months or a year. So in their defense, who would have thought that a hose that, um, that was just made up and only on the truck for six or eight months would be bad. So anyways, I'm going to stop yapping, and I'm going to go ahead and put this together, and then we're going to start the truck. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you how to do these, these uh, fittings. I already did the one side. That's going to be your final product. Anyways, it's a two-part fitting, and you have to... Get a little oil or Vaseline. Uh, that's what she said. Anyways... There's a threaded part in there. You're just gonna stick that on the hose. And it's the opposite turn. So what's gonna happen is, it's gonna insert like that. It's a compression fitting. But the little threads on the inside of this piece are gonna bite onto the hose. So you have to, once you get it in there, you just, it's the opposite way of what you would normally want to turn it. But all we do is drive, right? That's all we do. Just We just drive. That's all we do. We just drive. We just drive. Anyways, you're going to want to get it to... So that the hose is flush with as far as it can go okay then you want to take the other piece this piece is threaded obviously and it's going to go inside those threads so you just take a little oil and put it on the end that's what she said or vaseline or whatever kind of little lubricant you got and then you just pop her in and this is the difficult part because she's going to get really tight. And I only have a channel locks and a vice grip. So. And you want to definitely do this piece first. Because if you try to put them both on together, you won't know if the hose is seated to as far as it can seat here. Okay. So don't try to put both pieces on together. It won't. Well, it, it might work, but you won't know. You might only have this much hose in there. And then you get down the road, and you're dead in the water. So now you got to take it all back apart. So do yourself a favor. Don't put both pieces on together. Put this piece on first. Or not. Shit, I'm holding that cross right here. And it is more difficult... But, and then you just tighten her down, and then you're going to go all the way so that it's seated, and that's your final product. So I'm going to pause you guys again, and then I'm going to get this thing uh, done. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, so I did the hose. It, I wasn't happy because the other one went straight up, so I... I did it like three times so far. Anyways, everything, I, I'm, so I actually, I, I undid this ring down here, and there's three O-rings in this type of fuel filter, or water separator. One, two, and three on the bottom. I have, I did change that bottom one when we first got it, because it was used, and I figured, oh, it probably didn't, hadn't been changed in forever, because a lot of times they don't change them. The O-ring was good, because I'm still getting... I don't I don't understand it this is kind of odd so like I said this one was straight pointed straight up so I 
I, I was still getting some air in there and I don't know so as soon as I would hit the hose it would go away and this is the brand new hose but then when I go like this to the to the unit it stops so I don't I hope I don't have a small crack somewhere in there that's forming you know that's kind of what I'm hoping or maybe it's just an o-ring that's not sealing a hundred percent I don't know but I'll let you guys see so I'm just about done then I gotta clean up and uh, get on down the road I mean it's gone down significantly but not it's it's I don't know it's I've never seen that before but it's gone now and then it kind of comes back a little bit it's really not I mean I know that's just the shape of the look at that see so maybe that is just a little bit see that's, that's air that is not just vibrating that's air but when I go like that it stops So I was wondering if maybe that I thought it was the air or the fuel line, but as I pushed the fuel line, it actually pushed the, the dome. So I don't know, man. I don't know if, but I'm not getting any air when I hammer down on the accelerator. So there's no hesitation, and I'm getting no little bit of black smoke, but that, that's that's small enough for, for older trucks. So I'm not sucking any air, it just appears like it in the reservoir, unless that truly is just the shaking now of the truck. I don't know. Anyways, I'm done. I'm done messing with it, man. I gotta clean up and get the hell out of here, man. I'm still a few hours from Minnesota. So anyways, I hope you uh I hope this is informative. Please like, share, and subscribe. Ciao.